Hello everyone. So uh, my name is Vanya with MHPSS.net. We are here with Jude Okeria from TPO Uganda, who is kindly going to answer questions posed by our colleagues during the webinar on community-based mental health and psychosocial support in practice, Voices from East and Southern Africa. During the webinar, we had some connection uh, challenges and Jude was unable to answer the questions posed, so he has kindly joined us today to do that. Thank you, Jude, for being with us again. Yeah, you're welcome. Fine. So I'm gonna, great, thanks. So I'm gonna start with the questions. The first one is from our colleague, uh, Paulina Acosta. It has two, two sub questions. The first one is, has TPO Uganda developed any psychoeducation or outreach manuals? And B, concretely, what are the community's natural support systems for psychological and social support? Thank you very much, Vanya, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Acosta, for the question. TPO Uganda has developed a psychoeducative manual uh, uh, that we are using uh, for conducting uh, therapies. And for question B, directly, uh, the natural support systems include the self-help groups, religious leaders, caretakers of families with mental health problems. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jude. So our next question is from Giulia Nervo, and she says, I would like to further understand the patient support group. How did TPO Uganda adapt the World Health Organization guidelines? What was the process? And when you say adapted, do you mean context and culturally wise? Thank you very much, uh, Nevo, uh, for the question. Uh, PSG is a patient support group. It's, uh, it's a concept that is designed to fit within the existing uh, community structures. And the purpose of the, of, the, of the support of the concept is to improve the psychosocial well-being of patients, caregivers, and their families. It brings together the caregivers and people with mental health problems. And then for the, the other question, uh, the World Health uh, Mental Health I mean Guidelines, uh, TPR has adapted the, uh, the guidelines, yes, within the, within the context, and we are using it to scale up mental health services in a non-specialized health setting. Thank, Thank you. you. So our next question comes from our colleague, Betty Akello. It's on the Vill Village Savings and Loans Association model. And she asked, to my understanding, this module needs one to have a business that support, supports a person. Do you open up a business for the clients? In this model, thank you very much, Akello. In this model, we encourage, we encourage clients to start up uh, these initiatives by themselves after recovery and testimonies from many of them have provided good progress on these small scale businesses so we really encourage after the recovery mm -hmm. another question still uh, jude on the village savings and, and loans association is by carmen valle and she asks i like the model of participants supported to join the village savings and loans association upon completion we have struggled with the village savings and loans associations being used in communities more broadly, but not necessarily including persons with psychosocial disability themselves. It's been more their families and communities that have been benefited. Have you found good inclusion of persons with mental health problems? Thank you very much, uh, Vale, for the question. Uh, this is the reason why we are we are adopting VSLA because it directly targets persons uh, with mental health problems. And this helps to, to demystify the social, cultural, uh, I mean, aspects. And this specifically brings out inclusion for persons with mental health problems. Thank you, Jude. And still on this topic, Mone asks, are groups informed of the livelihood component during the conception of the project? No, uh, uh, the clients are not informed during inception. The, the livelihood is specifically 
designed after after recovery. So the initiative is mentioned after the clients have gone through a 10 structured therapy. Okay. <clears throat> and now on the community and the cognitive behavioral therapy. Christine Harris asks, please tell us where we can learn more about community therapy, adaptive cognitive behavioral therapy. As I said before, thank you very much, Christine. TPO has contextualized, has, a, has, has designed, has developed its own, its, own, its own manual, or you can call it a module that we use. So it is adapted within the local context. We use we we use this we use the CBT guidelines which are clinical but we adapt it to our local setting so yes we have uh, a psychoeducative manual that we use thank you from asif ali still on cognitive behavioral therapy he asks how come the community therapy adapted the clinical cognitive behavioral therapy on different populations is there any culturally developed scale for the larger traumatized population before the application of the cognitive behavioral therapy. Thank you very much, Ali, for the question. I don't get the question well. However, the adaptation looks at the context in relation to the guidelines on non-specialized services. So we really look at the context, but adapting it in relation to the non-specialized services. Thank you. And now on gender-based violence survivors, Betty Akello asks, you made mention that some clients undergo gender-based violence. How do you deal with such cases in regards to offering psychosocial support? Do you have case workers to counsel gender-based violence survivors? Yeah, thank you very much, Betty. Yes, we have our trained social workers who are trained on gender-based violence to counsel GBV survivors. Yes. Okay. Uh, on access to medicine, Kilara asks, access to and timely provision of medicine to patients has been repeatedly reported in refugee settlements in West Nile, where TPO Uganda operates. How has this impacted on the effective delivery of mental health and psychosocial support services to the population mentioned, and how is TPO Uganda addressing this gap? Thank you for the question. Psychotropic medications has been a, a challenge to TPO Uganda and also to, uh, I mean, to Uganda in general because of the problems of, uh, of access. However, uh, we've tried to provide through, uh, through funding, through providing buffer to the health centers and to the refugee communities. However, the initiative of VSLA is the one which is working where we expect clients after recovery to be able to buy their own medication. And we're also adopting, we also adopting uh, an initiative called the Drug Bank, where we, 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 we work with the community support structures to contribute some money to the Drug Bank so that they're able to buy their own medicines. Yeah. It's still in progress. Yeah. Interesting, thank you so much, Jay. Now, a couple of other questions on other topics from Lynn Denute. Can you please tell us more about the assessment forms, intake and follow-up that you are using? So how are clients selected? Which items are included in the assessments? Uh, TPO Uganda uses uh, different tools. We use uh, what we call the SRQ, self-reporting questionnaire. And this is a screening tool. And the and that tool after after that tool we also use a phq9 patient health questionnaire that helps to identify the symptoms of trauma and depression and then we use a, a post traumatic stress disorder uh, checklist which confirms the diagnosis of trauma within within the patients and then later on in the therapies we use uh, the daily mood scale to follow up uh, with the patients and also the home referral forms. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, and Joel also has a question. He says he would like to ask you about how structured sessions are organized. So is there a manual that includes a topic for every session up to six or 12 months? Are the sessions on a monthly or on a weekly basis? 
Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Joel. Yes, we have a manual which is structured. It is 10 sessions and, and each session is, uh, is described and it is, it is uh, it's used, to, it's supposed to be weekly, every week uh, per, per session. So it is structured, it's a 10 structured manual, yes. Okay, thank you. And then Grace Musabimana asks, what are the strengthened systems to address relapse and stigma? Thank you very much, uh, Grace. Uh, this uh, follows the, uh, the question in relation to the natural support systems. Within the community support structures, we've identified and trained the key actors, and we've trained them on basic counseling skills, basic therapeutic skills, and this include the village health teams, the religious leaders, and the social workers. So these are the systems within the community that are able to, to support basic counseling, identify and refer cases of mental problems. Okay. So our last question comes from our colleague Alex. At what stage does CPO terminate discharge persons with mental health problems from their programs? Thank this you very much, Alex. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex, for the question. The termination really depends on the, on the individual's recovery. But most times, based on our experience, six months, most of them six months, but the ones that have relapsed after six months, it goes, uh, the recovery goes after, I uh, mean, one year. But we also do a lot of follow-up within the homes and also supporting families to make sure the individuals recover. But most times, six months to one year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jude. Thank you for making the time. It was a pleasure speaking with you again. You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes.